Let's start with the other microbe that is fungal corneal ulcer. Yes. So my first question, what is the most common fungi associated with causation of keratitis or corneal ulcer? The answer everybody is aspergillus. Okay. Now aspergillus is which type of fungi? Instead of the name, they may give the group filamentous fungi having septate hyphae with septate hyphae. So you have to remember this also, the classification. So they are using a little bit of microbiology and ophthalmology. That's all. Yes. Now, please remember, in cases of fungal corneal ulcer, patient classically gives history of trauma with vegetative material. Now, if you try to convert it into a question, you may have seen if you have done MCQs previously, everybody. The MCQs come something like this. A 52-year-old farmer from Rajasthan gives history of injury with sugar cane five days back. Okay. As soon as I hear this, what do I understand? Farmer. Farmer means working with vegetative material. History of injury with sugar cane. Sugar cane means vegetative material. As soon as I hear something like this, farmer and vegetative material, I know it is bound to be a case of fungal corneal ulcer. Yes. Am I clear about this? Done. Now, very importantly, everybody, once we know about this, we should know that the signs in cases of fungal corneal ulcer are out of proportion to the symptoms. That means the patient will say, Sir, I don't have a lot of pain. There will be minimal redness. There will be minimal irritation. But when you will examine, you will see a fulminant ulcer already being formed. So the patient is not coming due to the symptomatic problem. The patient is coming because he can see some kind of wound or ulcer being formed in the eye. Yes. So what are these signs, everybody? Let's focus on the signs. Number one. First of all, dry looking ulcer. This is something which you understand with, um, what do you say, experience. Whether the ulcer is... Uh, dry looking or is it uh, wet and glistening? Okay, this is not something which I can teach you theoretically, basically. Secondly, everybody, feathery margins of ulcer. Important diagnostic point which you can see, everybody. What do I mean to say? Let's say this is my ulcer. One ulcer can be like this, a completely circumscribed with smooth edges or I am saying the ulcer in cases of fungi is like this. With irregular margins which look like the feathers of a bird. Yes, feathery margins of ulcer. Third important sign everybody. Satellite lesions. What do I mean by satellite everybody? What is moon to earth? That is what is a satellite. Yes. So, along with the main ulcer, you will see some small ulcers in the periphery. So, we call them satellite lesions. As simple as that. Then everybody, another important feature is Wesley immune immune Ring. Okay. So what is Wesley immune ring, everybody? Ring of immunity, antigens from the wound, antibodies, they are colliding at one place and they are visible as a faint ring. Okay. So around the ulcer, you will be able to see a faint ring of antigen antibody complexes and that is called as Wesley immune ring. Okay. Lastly, everybody, hypo 
hyperion or pus in the anterior chamber we have again seen a lot of photographs already yes but how to differentiate a hyperion of bacterial corneal ulcer from a hyperion of a fungal corneal ulcer i hope you remember the bacterial corneal ulcer hyperion was mobile but in this case it is immobile the pus is thick so because of the thick pus if you will move your head to the left or the right the hypopion will not move it is almost stuck at the inferior portion of the cornea immobile and it is a sterile that means you will be able to culture the microorganism from the hypopion sample am i clear to everybody so two characteristic differences between bacterial hypopion and fungal hypopion right now you've seen that i have made a diagram here of the fungal corneal ulcer if you have understood this along with the clinical features you will be able to see all the same things in the image that i am going to show you next let's see this image everybody yes in this image what are we able to see first of all everybody you see the ulcer in the center and you will be very easily able to see that it does not well circumscribe it does not have any smooth margins yes feathery margins of the ulcer no confusion about this then if we focus we are able to see this small satellite lesion also so i am marking this as a satellite lesion okay everybody then if i again focus everybody i am able to see this faint ring of immunity am i clear to everybody again so this is my vesely immune ring no confusion here everybody yes the only thing which we are not able to see here in this photograph is a hypopion if a hypopion was present you would have seen pus here everybody yes so this would have been a hypopion so all the characteristic features of a fungal corneal ulcer why am i showing them to you in an image as soon an image comes you should be able to diagnose without any history without anything that it is a case of fungal corneal ulcer please remember along with that the history of trauma it will make your job easier that now once we have been able to diagnose it everybody let's treat it so obviously to treat it we will have to give antifungals no brainer everybody which antifungals to use natamycin 5% eye drops these are the drugs of choice you can say because they can be used in cases of filamentous fungi which are the most common cause that is aspergillus and fusarium but in case you have a candida infection you can go to ampho tericin b 0.15% drops please remember atropine is used as supportive therapy just like in cases of bacterial corneal ulcer and again just like in bacterial corneal ulcer due to the fundamental of perforation and the risk for it steroids are contraindicated done everybody no confusion i hope everybody that's all about our fungal corneal ulcer